It is late October, 1937, and the Battle of Shanghai engulfs the city, once known as the Pearl of the Orient. Barely recognizable after more than three months of continuous fighting and siege, historians often compare the intensity of this urban warfare to that of Stalingrad in 1942. Yet this was only the beginning of a brutal war destined to last eight years. Amid the fiery chaos and destruction, a group of determined soldiers from the 88th Division of China's National Revolutionary Army firmly and heroically stood their ground to oppose the invading Japanese for six long days. They are immortalized today as the 800 heroes of Si Hang, and their story is one of valor and sacrifice. Following the Marco Polo Bridge incident on July 7, 1937, Japan invaded mainland China without a declaration of war. However, it was not until they later reached the suburbs of Shanghai on August 13th that they first exchanged fire with Chinese defenders. The Japanese were hesitant to use artillery or bomber aircraft against suspected Chinese positions along the Suzhou River, since one side contained foreign concessions and international settlements. The use of mustard gas and other chemical weapons was also strictly avoided for fear of inviting foreign intervention. Situated on the riverbank and surrounded by foreign concessions on all three sides, the Sihang warehouse was consequentially exempted from such attacks. Unfortunately, this meant it had to be rooted out directly by infantry, paving the way to a heroic last stand by Chinese forces. By the first day of battle on October 27th, the 1st Battalion of the 524th Reserve Regiment, 88th Division, consisted of only 414 soldiers, a reduction to half of its initial strength due to heavy street-to-street -street fighting. Although Chinese forces had a numerical advantage, Imperial Japanese forces outgunned them with heavy artillery, tanks, and aircraft, forcing the Chinese to withdraw on several occasions after taking an objective. Sometimes Chinese soldiers resorted to suicide bomber tactics, strapping satchel charges to their bodies and diving under Japanese tanks to disable or destroy them. The Japanese also used this concept in the later stages of the war in the Pacific. As previously mentioned, the 1st Battalion only had 414 combat effective soldiers. So why were they called the 800 Heroes? In short, their commanding officer did not want to reveal his actual numbers and told the media that they were 800 men, ready to fight to the death. At around 1 p.m. on October 27th, a small-scale Japanese attack on the warehouse was suppressed with machine gun fire and German-provided hand grenades. Although the first day was relatively successful, the Chinese knew they could not hold on to the warehouse for very long, so they were ordered to stay put and stall the Japanese advance into Shanghai while other units retreated further inland, all while putting on a show of force for the foreigners watching across Suzhou Creek. Exhausted and sleep-deprived, the 1st Battalion was greeted the next day with the droning of Japanese bombers overhead and cannon fire. The attackers also launched another incursion in the rain, but were repulsed again by well-positioned Chinese machine gun emplacements. After news of the defense of the Sihang warehouse reached locals across Shanghai, they supported the soldiers by donating 10 truckloads of vital food supplies and clothing. They also held up signs with the approximate number of Japanese soldiers and the direction from which they were attacking. The Chinese were also gifted a flag of the Republic of China to erect atop the building, which they did during the early hours of October 29th. This proved to be a significant morale booster, for the next day, around 30,000 civilians gathered on the bank of the Suzhou Creek to show their support and shouting, Long live the Republic of China! But the celebration was interrupted when Japanese fighter planes attempted to shoot down the flag. They were repelled and soon gave up after many unsuccessful strafing rounds, fearing to accidentally hit any of the foreign concessions. A massive assault on the warehouse was launched yet again that day, and the Japanese began chipping away at the west wall with explosives, hoping to penetrate the thick concrete barricades that had resisted siege for so long. Unfortunately for them, a determined and battle-worn Chinese private strapped himself with grenades and jumped off the building into the group of Japanese, taking down 20 enemy soldiers with him. After nearly an entire day of fierce fighting, the attack finally ceased as the Japanese withdrew under a smoke-filled night sky. By October 30th, the Japanese had finally learned from their previous mistakes 
and resorted to shelling the defenders into submission. Although the constant shelling was deafening, its actual effectiveness was very limited and the fortified warehouse remained standing. Foreign troops stationed in the area grew tired of taking random fire and pressured the Chinese high command to make a tactical retreat out of the Sihang warehouse. A ceasefire agreement was reached for the Chinese to pull back from the warehouse during the night of November 1st via the new Lesse Bridge. During the withdrawal, Japanese machine guns and artillery suddenly opened up on the bridge. This was the last straw for the foreign soldiers who had been watching the battle without being able to take any action. They responded with machine gun fire of their own and covered the Chinese withdrawal as they ran across the bridge. Around 370 soldiers safely made it to the foreign concessions on the other side, only to be arrested and placed in POW camps as part of the agreement with the Japanese for their ceasefire. The Imperial Japanese Army suffered more than 200 killed trying to take the warehouse, which is significant when you consider their overwhelming manpower and equipment. After the Battle of Shanghai, most of China's veteran troops were depleted and the survivors retreated to the capital city of Nanjing. There, the Japanese would avenge their fallen comrades during an orgy of rape and the sadistic slaughter of 300,000 civilians, known as the Rape of Nanjing.